Welcome to another History Wanderer video and in this video we're looking at the sinking of the pride of the Royal Navy HMS Hood and her last stand at the Battle of Denmark Strait. The main purpose of this is to try to understand why the Hood sank so quickly what caused the explosions that sank her and why is the wreck in three pieces on the seabed I'm actually going to do the engagement in reverse order the reason I'm doing it in reverse order is because every other person's opinions are the facts as to the sinking of the ship they all seem to focus on the fifth salvo I've tried to establish why people are so focused on the fifth salvo instead of looking at the entire engagement. And the only reason I can see is down to the two Admiralty Board of Inquiries, which states that they believed the reason for the loss of the ship was in all probability due to a 15 inch shell fired from the Bismarck hitting the after magazine. So, let's look at the fifth salvo but before we get into the salvo let's get a few facts and figures together the Bismarck shells travel through the air at a speed of 2700 feet per second now the inquiry established that for the shells to have penetrated the HUD's belt armor they'd have had to have been travelling in at in excess of 3,000 feet per second. So the HUD's belt armour meant she was immune to a hit from the Bismarck. Now, at the beginning of the engagement, Bismarck shells would have been approaching the HUD at approximately 15 degrees, and at the end of the engagement, at approximately 9 degrees. Because... Of the size of the weaponry, you're talking effective point-blank range. And the range was approximately 8,500 yards. Now, could a hit on the base of the mast at the angle that the Bismarck was at to the HUD have hit the after magazine? And if you look at the angle I put up now, you'll see that the angle is approximately 9 degrees at the end of the engagement. So if I raise the ship up now, you can see that a shell coming in hitting the best mast would have had to have made at least a 33 degree def downward deflection to enter the 15 inch magazine and underneath the after pom pom on, on this uh, these graphics is where the 4 inch up ammunition magazine is and it would have had to have taken a similar angle of deflection to penetrate that magazine now could a shell have even penetrated the deck armour and in all probability no it couldn't the angle of the shell hitting the deck armour would be too shallow and the effect of the shell hitting the armour would be like a storm skimming off the water There's n the angle is just too, sh too shallow for the shell to bite and be able to penetrate the armour and even if it could have penetrated the armour, it would have just simply exited the back of the ship, coming through the um, the side of the boat deck, and just exit, enter, entering the sea. So, it's highly unlikely that a 15-inch shell during the fifth salvo could have actually penetrated the HUD's armour. Now, of all the scenarios I've seen, 
the one factor that's never taken into account is time. For any disaster to occur, there has to be a chain of events which puts the wrong thing at the wrong time for the wrong thing to happen. In other words, there has to be a way for an explosion to be caused on board the ship for that explosion to then cause the loss of the ship. So, how long did it take from the arrival of the fifth salvo until the first external signs of the HUD having a catastrophic explosion within the ship? And there were two major signs that were seen by the crew on the Prince of Wales. The first one was a flare which came out of the ventilation shafts of the after engine room. And the second was all the items on the after parts of the ship on the boat deck were blown up. Not upward and out, up. So the force inside the ship was not a hit coming in either side or from above because then the debris would have gone up and out all the ways. But they quite clearly state that all the debris was lifted up. So the force was directly below. So, we know from the Prince of Wales that they stated the time of the first signs of the fifth salvo and to the ship actually blowing up was two seconds. Just two seconds after the fifth salvo arrived. So what we need to know is how long does it take a magazine explosion to show signs of that explosion externally. Do we have any evidence of how long this takes? Well, the first thing we can point to is Captain John Foster Barham Karslake, Royal Navy, who witnessed the sinking of HMS Invincible. And he states, she was struck by a salvo on Q turret. There was an appreciative interval after the enemy shell hit before the resulting explosion was noticeable. So, is one or two seconds an appreciable interval? Do we have any other examples? And for this, we have to go to the Pacific Ocean. And particularly, we go to the Arizona, the USS Arizona. Now, after the bomb hit on the Arizona, which is known to have hit the magazine squirrelly, the first signs of a main magazine bomb hit was after seven seconds. So even if we assume that the bomb dropped had a two second delay, that means you have a five second gap until the first external signs of that explosion. So think about it, that's five seconds, not the two seconds that the witnesses of the sinking of the hood experienced. So to recap, the hood was at the wrong angle to Bismarck because she was at approximately 0 0.06 degrees after making one 20 degree turn and possibly starting a second. The shells were fired too shallow and they weren't powerful enough to penetrate, penetrate through the armour. So even if the shell had have penetrated, if you study the video I put up earlier of the effectiveness of the Bismarck shells, you'd have seen that there's only a one in seven chance that that shell would have detonated. So in all likelihood, the fifth salvo could not have sunk HUD. So, 
what's more likely to have happened? Well, let's go through the entire engagement now. But as I say, we're going to go in reverse order. No. We know the Bismarck fired five salvos at the HUD. The fifth arrived too quick to cause the loss of the ship. The fourth missed. And the reason it missed is because the HUD made that 20 degree turn. That was after the third salvo hit and salvos one and two missed. So the only other option is that the third salvo caused the loss of the ship. But that means it would have taken approximately a minute and a half for whatever caused the damage on the HUD to cause it to blow up. So, let's take it now from the first known hit on the HUD. And that was an 8-inch armor-piercing shell fired from the Prince Eugen, which struck HUD on the boat deck and caused a massive fire with the up ammunition and the unrotated projectile launchers. For more on the UP launchers, please check my earlier video, which I've just simply called the Bonkers Weapon. No. All the ships who saw the engagement stated that this fire, throughout the engagement, didn't decrease in intensity, it actually got more fierce. The fire grew in strength, it did not start to peter out. When the third salvo arrived, one hit went through the spotting tower, one hit at the shelter deck and killed approximately 200 men who were sheltering from the fire on the boat deck. And one is assumed, it's not certain, so I'm not taking it as a guaranteed hit, to have hit at the base of the command turret, which is where the Hud's men spotting tower is and the bridge. But I'm, I'm going to assume that that didn't hit because it wasn't a, a guaranteed hit. So, the shell would have arrived at approximately 14 degrees. And what that would have done, if it had hit the 5 inch armour plate, it would have simply just blown it out. If it hit the 7 inch armour deck, it would have put a large B shaped hole in the armour deck. Now the shell would travel approximately 50 to 60 feet. That's even if the, the fuse on the Bismarck detonated because the, the Bismarck was on a point two five of a second detonation fuse. But we have to assume that shell like the majority of the shells fired from the Bismarck, failed to detonate. So, the shell goes through, it lodges up against the interior belt armour of HUD. But what that does is, it opens a conduit from the upper deck, where the fire is roaring, down into the engine room. The fire would have spread over that hole and the heat would have been able to go from compartment to compartment into the bowels of the ship. Now as it enters each compartment, it would have caused a flashback. And a flashback is simply where the heat is so intense that all the gases in the air combust. And the first thing it does it takes all of the oxygen out of that area. So anybody in that compartment 
would either be killed instantly by the heat or instantly suffocated because they'd been you know, unable to breathe. So, the gases make their way down with the air ex uh, exploding until it hits the after engine room. And this is where all more than likely the shell would have come to rest. One question I've been asked already regarding this is how come no one got in touch with damage control and say that the shell had arrived? And the simple reason being is the crew would have been incapacitated. And the way damage control works on ships is they only contact the bridge when there is a problem. They don't phone up during a battle and say, hi, how are you doing? We are fine down here. Otherwise, damage control would be overrun by unnecessary communications. So if the crews in those compartments are instantly incapacitated, there's no one to contact damage control. Some also said it couldn't have been an engine room hit because the ship didn't seem to lose headway. The it's as though people think that the throttles on a major warship are the same as a throttle on a car, of which you've got to keep your foot on the accelerator. If you take your foot at the accelerator, the car slows down and stops. The throttles on the HUD were big horizontal wheels, approximately a foot and a half to two foot in diameter, which had to be manually turned to regulate the steam going through the turbines, which in turn turns the screws, which push the ship through the water. So even if the crew had been incapacitated, the ship would not have slowed down. So we've now got the heat and the flashback in the engine room. This would have then mixed with the fuel oil fumes and would have caused an even larger explosion which would have vented through the engine room vents which was the first signs seen by the other ships of something going wrong on the HUD the second thing that would have happened is that pressure would have built up and that would have blown up in the after part blowing up what was described as the debris directly up with the explosion directly underneath the after part of the boat deck when that explosion happened that would have blown out the four inch after magazine bulkhead as well as the bulkhead between the engine room and the boiler room in turn the four inch ammo would have had to cook before it detonates. The storage on major warships was not at an ambient temperature. The magazines were cooled. An example of this is Commander Kearns during the HMS Amethyst when she was on the Yancey River. He used the cooling of the magazines as a reason to get the fuel oil he needed to break out. Because he said, if I haven't got the fuel oil, I cannot cool my magazines. And the severe danger of the magazines just blowing up. So the magazines were kept in a cool environment. So that four inch ammo has to cook. While that ammo is cooking, the bulkhead to the front of the ship's magazines gives. At that same time, the bulkhead between the 4-inch and the 15-inch after magazine gives. This in turn starts to cook the after magazine. Then when the forward, mag when the forward boiler room bulkhead gives the forward magazines start to cook but because the four inch after has already started the after magazine blows first 
and it blows the entire stern off. So the ship instantly starts to heel over. Within a couple of seconds, the forward magazine goes off and the center of the ship just drops like a stone. So what you effectively have is the entire ship blowing up. Not just the after magazine, but all the magazines. And we know that both forward and after magazines detonated because the ship is in three pieces on the seabed. If it was only the after magazine, the ship would be in two pieces. The stern would be detached from the remainder of the ship. But we know from the wreckage on the seabed that the bow and the stern were blown off. So the only way that can happen is both magazines blowing. So, why did the board of the Admiralty not come to similar conclusions? Um, basically, it comes down to one glaring fact. And that is the fire which raged so fiercely was caused by the UP projectiles. The unrotated projectiles were stored 60 per box in relays down the bolt deck in steel containers that were only a quarter inch and non-fire resistant. I'll say that again, non-fire resistant. So the heat from the original fire would have got every single one of those containers to blow up and add fuel to the already burning fire. And they'd have gone in relays as the fire worked its way down the boat deck, which generated the heat to penetrate the bowels of the ship to cause the explosion. So why would the board of Admiralty gone out of the way to deflect away from this? And it comes down, I think, to just one reason. And that's the person who insisted that the UP projectors be fitted to the ship. And that guy was Winston Churchill. There is no officer during peacetime, let alone wartime, who expects to have any career in the Navy if he finds and publishes evidence that the actual loss of the ship was down to a weapon of which the then Prime Minister had ordered. And the other piece of evidence to me which ratifies this is the one thing that the Board of Inquiry recommended regarding the sinking of the HUD was the landing, which in layman's terms means the taking off the landing of the UP launchers. Now if that was not significant to the loss of the ship, the first sea lord could have just said, that's out of your remit, that's not what you're about, you're about what caused the sinking of the ship. So if it's a shell in the 15 inch magazine, there'd be no reason to land the UP launchers. But the fact they only recommended that the UP launchers get taken off shows clearly that that fire caused the loss of the ship. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that this is right. If you can come up with another reason or another theory as to the sinking of, of the ship, Please, do your views, put your comments below. I particularly like somebody who's got a better fire model who could put together a computer generation of the ship along with heat dynamics 
programs to show if that heat would have affected up the way I believe it would have affected the ship. And that then would definitely show if that could cause the loss of the ship. So, I hope I've given you something to think about. Leave your comments below. If you like what you hear, then ring that little notification bell. And I look forward to reading your comments below. But in the meantime, thanks for li listening. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And I hope to put another video up not too far from now. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day.